All right. So we looked at instrument panels. We looked at uh, the instrument panel demo, I should say. And let me recap this uh, and, uh, and also provide some, we provide what our, let's, I'll tell you what our central problem is. You already know what the central problem is, but I'm just going to recap. So what, here what we want to do is we want to see the problem with masks. Okay, uh, and then we wanted to establish a lot of chaos or randomness. We wanted to be able to do things quickly and have something come out of this. Um, I'm sure you've seen a ton of creature designers do uh, what they do best, and uh, a lot of guys I know, they'll do things like start with the photo, mirror the photo, find something weird in the photo, and start to pull a character out from there. Or, or they might kind of blow up an image that, that's very pixelated and then they just start to dig into where the darks are and the lights are and they start to find their own. Uh, Leonardo used to talk about looking into the wall and they would find and connect all of these little dots. Uh, he would just kind of draw battle scenes there in his mind. We, uh, we want to be able to establish randomness so that we kind of get to, we get cool stuff happening. If you watch Joseph Druss do his mech stuff, there is an element of chaos to the way that he approaches that. An element. Okay, so we established chaos and then we went to panel loops. Uh, we looked at the features. Um, we used extrude, which isn't, I didn't show you the actual extrude yet, so I'll show you that here before we leave this demo. Uh, and then we also looked at some polish options. Okay, and now the fundamental problem and this is really important, it's old. The fundamental problem is hard, crisp edges. And by that I mean hard, crisp edges right in there. Okay, that's been a problem for a long time, but see, what Pixelogic's trying to do is just create a real fast system for mech stuff, and that hard edge is uh, really messing things up. But there is a way to do it. You know, I'm not going to just give you a problem. There is a solution, and it is a very old solution. Anybody want to take a guess on how we can create hard, crisp edges using a feature that has been around since ZBrush 2. Let me close this and I'm going to prepare. Any thoughts? Anybody want to take a guess? It's a ZBrush 2 feature. It's been around for a long time and it's going to allow me to create really hard edges It's basically like panel loops, in fact. Okay. Nobody. All right. If I told you it was in the morph target subpalette, would you remember? Yes. Create difference mesh. So I'm going to just pause for a second. I want you to write that down. I want you to remember that. This is like one of the coolest tricks that you get to show people and, and they'll be and they'll almost guaranteed have never seen it. Uh, I, have, I had a, an old blog post on it. Um, Meets Meyer would use this a lot. But morph, uh, create difference mesh, which isn't even there right now, We'll definitely separate out the model, and uh, it will give us hard, crisp edges. So I'm going to show you guys that right now. I didn't plan on it, but I'm going to show it to you. Okay. So what we have to do first is we have to break this model up. All of these have to become separate parts. Let me undo this, uh, this crease. So we get back to where we were, and I'm going to undo the subdivision levels 
So we get back to the very, 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 very beginning. So now we need to separate out these parts. Okay. There's a new feature. Let me see. I haven't used it in this way, so we're going to try that first, and then I'll use the other options. Uh, well, you know what? I should probably show you. I'll just show you this kind of option. The first hardcore way that you would you could do this, and in fact, let me save this presentation um, so that I I can get back to it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Instrument panel demo one, and I'm saving that in projects. Okay, good. One thing you could do, let's just delete this subtool so it's not in the way, is you could just groups loop, I'm sorry, you could split and group split everything. So everything becomes its own separated out group. Let's turn solo mode off. All of these guys are now separated out, which means that their edges are complete separate pieces of geometry. So I can come in and use the move brush, and you see I can separate them, I can pull them out, and it's not going to affect the rest of the geometry. And then we could consider, say, merging visible. No weld, just merge visible. Here we go. But see now how everything is separated? That was not the case before, you know, in this way. They, were, they had edge loops, but they were not separated out pieces of geometry. So now we have separated out pieces of geometry. I'm going to undo. What we can do is store a morph target. And then let's go into Move, Control Click, and I'm going to make sure that um, Mask by Polygroup is off for this because I want to move the entire model. And I'm going to mentally keep track of where that line is, and I'm just going to move it out a little bit. Like that. And then once that's done, I'll have a morph target that is way back here and one that's up here. That's the existing one. I can switch between them. And then I can create a difference mesh that is the difference between the two. And what does that mean? That means it has thickness. That thickness is kind of like a panel loop extrude. So these are separated out. I can smooth these guys, and I should be able to separate them. Let's see if it, I hope it didn't weld. I'm going to come back to this and to this one. There's some welding here. Uh oh. One second. I'll show you that again. Let me restart. It's a good thing we saved that model or project. Okay. Mm, I do not want to bring that in. Let's bring in the other one. Okay, so 
I'm going to walk through this. I'm pressing shift. These guys are all merged. Okay. And so what I want to do now is separate these guys. And what I'm going to do is try to find ZBrush's other. They've got a new feature that allows you to unweld group border. So I'm in geometry, modify topology, unweld groups border. So I haven't used that before. But it's pretty straightforward. Auto masking, mask by poly group. I'm going to go to the move brush. Technically speaking, these should all be separated. Okay, they are. Uh, if we could polish by feature, yeah, we can see everything separate out. So again, in case you missed it, we took the poly groups that we had, which everything was combined, and we just went to modify topology and unweld groups border. And this is a new feature. And it's designed for workflows similar to what I'm showing you now. You unweld the group border, which means that each one of these pieces becomes a separate piece of geometry. Just an entirely separate piece. Okay, and then what we do is we will store a morph target. Okay, we'll click, make sure that this mask by polygroups is off, drag out. We can switch between the two, and we can create a difference mesh. Okay, and when we create a difference mesh, then we get hard-edged extractions in there. Now, let's see, did it merge? Is there some kind of place where it merges these pieces all together into one plane field? That is possible. So let's control shift click on that. It did. No. And let's try to just erase things. Yeah. So this workflow is not the best now, as in it's not connecting these pieces, or we need to get them further apart from each other um, for that to really work a little bit better. Okay. Uh, Reclicking the new. Michael, tell me what you're meaning by that, the unweld. Clicking this again, unweld groups border, okay. Problem is I think these guys are merged. So there's probably a way to do this in terms of um, extract, what they used to do anyways is you would, uh, uh, how do I say it, let's undo that one piece we just did. Okay. So what you would do is export this. Okay, I'm going to select a poly mesh star. I'm going to import, but on import, let's make sure the weld is totally off. On export, let's do that again. This is getting a little confusing though, guys, so I'm only going to spend two seconds on this. I'm going to say turn, uh, merge this, export subgroups. We should be fine. And we need these groups. Okay. I'm going to export it, and I'm basically going to import it back in. And that is another tact that you can do to uh, kind of separate out vertices that are like right on top of each other and getting kind of combined into one. But it's not going to work for us right now. All right. So let's open up our guy again. If anything comes, I'll make sure I add something for the harder surface. The other option that you have that I just want to make sure we're crystal clear on, let's panel loop this. 
Let's come into uh, Polish by Feature. Is come into the Move Brush. So press 2, that's the Move Brush. Go into the Brush, Curve, AccuCurve. If you have AccuCurve on, and let's try doing this with Mass by Poly Group to 100. And you work those edges. Let's turn symmetry off. You can get good clean edges. Uh, and that mass by poly group, or I'm sorry, the accu curve is really quite a quite a feature there. This is a bit of work though. Okay, so we'll look and explore and keep trying to uh, understand this process, but I'll reiterate the, what we're showing right now is the, um, how do I say it, what we're, show, what we're looking at right now is the workflow for kind of very smooth but mechanical processes, uh, mechanical things like let's say a Corvette, right? That's the first problem that uh, Pixelator tackled was how do you do some kind of sleek curve in? And as Michael's uh, saying, there is a way to do the other part that we're trying to do. Uh, so we'll get that. And I'm pretty sure it's that export-import.